afternoon. Our first song will be number 418, 418. sing number 397 397 
bow with me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, we're so thankful unto thee for this beautiful day, for the privilege of meeting out here with like, brethren of like precious faith to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Our Father, we ask your blessings upon all who have asked an interest in our prayers. We pray thee, dear Father, that if it be your will, that you will restore them back to their health and place in life. We ask for thy blessings to be upon those who are bereaved. Pray thee, dear Father, that you will bless them and bless their families. We pray thee, dear Father, that you will be with us tonight and help us to do those things that are right and in accordance to your holy will. We pray thee, dear Father, that you will bless all who, who stand in the need of prayer. If it be your will, that they will be restored back to their proper place in life. We pray thee, dear Father, to bless the church with the riches of your blessings. We pray thee, dear Father, that we will always work together in harmony and peace and love and have the sweet fellowship that you would have us to have. We're thankful, dear Father, for each member of this congregation and for all the work and, and labor that they do. We pray thee, dear Father, that we will always work together in harmony, peace, and love. We pray thee, dear Father, to be with us in this service tonight Pray thee, dear Father, that the things that are said and done will be in complete harmony with your holy will. We ask thy blessings upon those on our young folks. We pray thee, dear Father, we thank thee, dear Father, for the, all the good that they, do, that they do. And pray thee, dear Father, that they will continue to grow in their grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the church will continue to be strong and go forward and do thy will. We pray thee, dear Father, that you will always guide us, keep us in the hollow of your hand, last and end, comfort us in death, give us a home in heaven with you. It's our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Light to mark number 227. 227, that'll be the song of invitation. Number 227. Before our lesson, we'll sing number 267. 267, if you'll stand, please. <coughs>
I bid you good evening for those that are visiting with us. We're certainly glad you've decided to be here with us tonight. In keeping with what we announced this morning, we wish to prevent, present an update concerning where we have been, what we are trying to accomplish, and where we're going to the membership here this evening. We're certainly glad each and every one is here with us tonight so that we can review uh, what we're trying to accomplish here at the Lord's Church in Bremen. Brother Martin is not with us tonight. He had to go and uh, rescue. Yes, he is here tonight. Well, <laughs> we're glad that he's here tonight. So that being the case, Martin is here. Uh, he called uh, earlier and said that Stephen had broken down. So we're glad that uh, that has been resolved and hopefully he's on his way. His vehicle broke it down, not Stephen, but his vehicle. <laughs> so we're going to depart a little bit tonight from our usual service of uh, gospel preaching. Uh, hopefully we can accomplish much here this evening. All right. We wish to update you on our local evangelism. Hopefully most of you, or all, hopefully would know for the most part what we're trying to accomplish here is concerning local evangelism. We have several things that uh, the Bremen Church here wishes to continue to participate in, namely some of these that we've mentioned on the screen behind me that hopefully you can follow along with us. Area-wide singings, these have been going on now for several years. I know that we have many positive comments concerning these. The next one is at the Rockmart Church. Hopefully uh, you know where that is. We'll take the van uh, when this comes about, but it would be uh, Friday, April the 23rd. The Rockmart Church will host our next area-wide singing. The congregation here at Bremen has always been uh, very willing to participate in these area events, and I'm sure this will be no exception. The church here does sponsor a radio program that's live broadcast, supposed to be a live broadcast, every Sunday morning beginning at 10.30 to 11 o'clock on WKNG 1060 AM. Many of our shut-ins do participate and take advantage of this uh, service, and we're hopeful that many, many others are listening in as well. It's our understanding that it's 50,000 watts power of this 1060 AM radio station during the time that we're on. So it does carry uh, a large footprint, broad coverage area. So we really don't have any idea who's listening, but we know that there are some out there that are, and that is a good way for us to carry on some local evangelism. Also, we wish to ask you to continue to take advantage of our website. Uh, several of us have become more and more computer savvy. Hopefully most of you have computers in your home, or at least you have family members that have computers in their home. Our website is an excellent resource too. And again, we wish to thank Brother Brian for heading up this effort. If you've uh, not had occasion to visit our website, I would encourage you to do so, because it is, again, an excellent resource too. All of our bulletins are archived there. Everything that is carried on here from a gospel meeting standpoint, from a lectureship standpoint, Bible studies, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, all the gospel preaching that goes on here, Sunday morning, Sunday night, everything, is broadcast live as it goes on and it's also archived on that website. So again, it is an excellent resource tool and if you want to relive the lectureship we had last fall, it's on the website. If you want to relive even the youth rally from last year, it's on the website. So again, I would ask you to take advantage of that opportunity. Also, recently we announced that we were changing internet carriers, which we have done so, and again, thanks to Brian for heading up this effort to make this transition smooth. We've now gone to a carrier that allows us more capacity so that more than one or two people can get on the website during the service so that it won't bog down. So we would encourage your feedback if some of you are at home and you can't make the service or you're away out of town and you can't make the service and you want to tune in, tune into the website, listen live, see the streaming video live as it's happening. We don't know exactly how many can get on there at one time, but we know that it's more than two. So we're very hopeful that the change that we've made in our internet carrier will help us in that effort. Our brothers keepers groups are going well. We have four as you're well aware and a lot of times I really have to 
be concerned, not really concerned, but I have to be careful about not spending too much time up here making announcements before our Sunday morning services begin because many of them are concerning Brothers Keepers events. That's a pleasant problem to have. That means we're active and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we couldn't be happier about that. Thanks to all those who are participating in our Brothers Keepers groups. It is an excellent work and we certainly want to continue that. We also wish to thank Brother Sidney and Brother Johnny for their fine efforts locally here as our ministers. And if you have yet to uh, thank them for their efforts and congratulate them for jobs well done, we would ask you to do that. Last to leaders and leaderettes. Um, we also participate in this and hopefully last week at this time many of you were here to see and hear Sean's update as to what we just recently encountered last week at the convention in Atlanta. We have soon to be the head honcho of last the leaders here in our assembly, Brother Whitmire. He's an expert on last the leaders. If you want to know anything about it, certainly he would be well qualified to answer your question. However, when he was speaking to us briefly last week as well, last the leaders has grown exponentially of recent. Now there are four or five um, sites Nashville, Atlanta, Orlando, where else? Memphis, Memphis Louisville. Louisville, and there are others that are being considered in Texas and Oklahoma. Tens of thousands participate in this event. And just the few that we had here that you saw last week warms our hearts. It really does. Not only does it bode well for the folks that are participating currently, but it bodes well for the future not only for the Lord's Church, but their professional careers as well. That's what it's all about, is to train them and to nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And for those who are helping train them, they get benefit from it also, no question about it. Concerning Last the Leaders, hopefully you're also well aware, we'll have an event immediately after the evening service tonight. For those that were uh, not aware of it, you're welcome to stay. Again, we'll appreciate those that participated either helping prepare or for those who actually did participate in last to leaders and leader else will have a service or a little uh, event for them tonight in the fellowship hall after the evening service. Another local evangelism thing that the Bremen Church here spends a lot of resources on is house to house and heart to heart. It's a publication that's put out once every two months that everyone who has an address in the city of Bremen receives. We really don't know how much good this is accomplishing, but we know that it is accomplishing some good because we do allocate thousands of dollars to this per year. But again, anything, anybody who has a, an address in the city of Bremen receives this. It has a plan of salvation in it. It has uplifting and positive messages, and it has scripturally based, Bible-based themes that we can sign our name to each time that it goes out. We also can adapt on the back page whatever specific to this particular congregation, which we do as well to announce upcoming gospel meetings, to announce upcoming events, and so forth. So that also helps in our effort to try to evangelize locally. Also, many of you hopefully are well aware that this congregation heavily supports Gospel Broadcasting Network. If you combine what we do with preaching the word with James Watkins, which is also under the oversight of the eldership at Highland and Dalton. They also oversee GBN. We give $8,500 a year to GBN. They need all the help we can get. And again, this is a satellite that is nothing but gospel preaching 24-7. It couldn't be any better. The eldership at Dalton does an excellent job of overseeing the content and the administration of this effort. It has suffered some recent setbacks as far as financial opportunities are concerned with the economy and so forth. It was more prevalent, prominently seen on some of the DISH and Direct TV satellites. Right now the money's not there to pay for that. But it is still available 24-7 on the internet, gbntv.org. Many of you at home, bring it up. You can, it'll stream live as you listen to it. And you can listen to it as long as you like or as little as you like. 
but again, we help support this effort. And again, it is sound gospel preaching 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will benefit from it, I assure you. The church building here has the GBN dish. Now let me say this briefly. Gospel Broadcasting Network will again this year have a nationwide gospel meeting. The dates of it are in June, late June, through July, June the 26th, I believe, through July the 2nd. It will be broadcast live on the website, and also we can stream it here on the big screen because of the dish that we have. We'll get you more specific information about that event as it comes available. But again, this nationwide gospel meeting from GBN that's sponsored will have some very well-known speakers that you're well aware of. Cliff Goodwin will be speaking, Larry Acuff will be speaking, B.J. Clark will be speaking, and others. So again, this is something that we can participate and benefit from. Our evangelism outreach continues, as you're well aware, and we always are very proud of this fact that the congregation here spends well over half its budget on evangelism, and that's where we want to continue to be. That allows us to contribute to other evangelistic efforts, not only in our backyard, but all over the world. We, again, we spend money on house to house, heart to heart, as we've mentioned. We spend money with the Judd family, Randy Judd and his efforts in Africa. And as you remember, he's come recently and done an update for us. We had Brother Waldron not long ago, who uh, does evangelistic efforts in India and has for many, many years. We support Bob and Betty Gray, Georgia Outreach. We also support Georgia Agape, the Christian Adoption Agency. We support uh, Truth for the World, Mesoamerican Missions through Truth for the World now. International Gospel Hour, this is Brother Claiborne, who's been here several times and has held gospel meetings at least a couple of times and has been here for a lectureship. He has a local or a uh, radio program that's on several national radio stations that we help support. We also support Apologetics Press for the Dave Miller in Montgomery. They have a website and they do a lot of things concerning Christian evidences. If you ever have any questions concerning evolution or Christian evidences, is there a God, where did he come from, what's he doing, and so forth, Apologetics Press really focuses on those deep subjects. They have a lot of excellent material for children also. If that's ever a need, I would highly encourage you to access their website, Apologetics Press. We also uh, have some of their literature here as well. It's an excellent program that we wholeheartedly support. We also support In Search of the Lord's Way, which is on TV, local channel 57. Now, that's not the uh, channel that it is on the satellite or the cable, but it's local Atlanta channel 57. But the Mac line is on TV every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m that we help support. Perhaps you may remember, or he says, churches of Christ in your area are helping support this telecast. That's the Bremen Church of Christ, and that's several others in this area, but we help support that broadcast. As a matter of fact, In Search of the Lord's Way's budget is larger than GBN's budget. I didn't know that, but it is. It's approaching $3 million a year, where GBN's is a little, little more than two. We also help support Christian Courier, which is Brother Jackson, Focus Press, which is Think Magazine, Preach the Word, again, GBN, which is um, under the oversight of the uh, eldership at the Highland Church in Dalton. We support Brother Rutherford, who is a uh, missionary to Australia. And again, we'd mentioned earlier the GBN support the Nationwide Gospel Meeting upcoming at those dates that you see. We also support Truth for the World, which also has a, an association with GBN. If you watch GBN some, you'll see some of the Bible study materials, but they emphasize that it's free. Anybody who wants any information, any questions answered, any Bible study materials whatsoever from GBN, if they want it, they get it free of charge. Why? Because we pay for it. That's our responsibility not theirs. GBN has always said that they will never solicit funds on the air. That's the church's responsibility and that's the reason that we support them. But uh, Truth for the World, John Grubb and Dave Comisack in Duluth help write a lot of this Bible study material that's uh, in conjunction with GBN. 
We also help train and support preachers at the Memphis School of Preaching. Right now we're trying to uh, get uh, Brother Stephen out of school, which will be shortly in the summertime. He'll be done. Can you believe it? He just started last week, it seems, and this summer he'll be out of Memphis School of Preaching. Can you believe it? Time flies so fast. We also support Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies in Cantonment or Pensacola, Florida. We have other missions that we participated in as well. More specifically, uh, we have had some of our young ones here the last couple of years to go to Latin American missions to Panama. We will do that again this year for those who want to participate and in conjunction with the Forest Park congregation in Valdosta, Brother Spin Broom will take a group down there. We will join our efforts with them again. For those who want to participate, see Brother Adams and we'll coordinate that effort to see that we can get you down there. But again, we will participate with the Forest Park congregation again in that effort. That'll be this summer, which will be here very shortly. We also had mentioned a couple of weeks back concerning our effort to help the brethren in Chile. Cue up the other one, if you would, please. I wish to bring to your attention some actual pictures from the Chilean government about some of the devastation that's there. It's incredible, really. And for what we are trying to do to help them, you don't see this on the news and you wonder why. It's not ours to understand. And what we did to help support these folks is certainly well received. These are not Photoshop doctored either. A lot of times this stuff is out of sight, out of mind. That's a statue, not a person. They speak for themselves. Now just think, some of the things that we did, the clothing that we gathered, the money that we gathered, the food and medicine that will be gathered that are sent down there, it's going to help some of these people. And if it weren't for us, they wouldn't get any help. Can you imagine how long it's going to take to recover from this? A long time. And whatever we can do to help these folks, they would be quite thankful for it, I'm sure. But again, the nature of our support is not for just general Chilean citizens. It's for members of the church. There are several specific congregations that we are helping through the Forest Park congregation in Valdosta. <clears throat> now, it's the eldership's responsibility, one of the many, to feed the flock. 
we have some upcoming events that are going to be a smorgasbord of spiritual food that we wish to bring to your attention. Upcoming event, the one that's almost upon us is our homecoming and gospel meeting. We've been announcing this for some time now, but you know it's only two weeks from today. Our homecoming and gospel meeting begins two weeks from today. Now, <clears throat> it's April the 25th through the 29th. Brother Cliff Goodwin will conduct the meeting for us. Many of you are well familiar with Brother Goodwin. He is an excellent speaker, and we would encourage you to invite your family, your friends, your neighbors, anybody that you know that might have a remote opportunity or interest to come, get them here. Not just on our goal day of Sunday, but it goes through Thursday night. We would encourage you to try to attend as many of them as possible. Now, concerning Sunday, we will have a potluck that will feed everybody that's here. Perhaps when we've had other potluck events like this, you see the sheer terror on some of the ladies' faces that are like, oh no, we're not going to have enough food. I would encourage you to please cook as much food as you can, just like it's Sunday dinner, for your family and then a little bit more, because we're very hopeful that we'll have 250, maybe 300 people here. There could be that many people here. So this fellowship hall will be full, or at least we'll plan for that. But again, I would encourage you to make plans now to bring plenty of food, more than just one dish, bring enough to feed the family that you know that's coming so that we'll make sure that we have plenty of food. We'd rather have too much than not enough. Did I do a good job on that, Sue? Camp in Agahee is coming up. Bremen's week is June 20 through the 26th. There are many other events um, at camp, and Brother Johnny again will be uh, directing that week. Bremen's week again, June 20 through 26. Our summer series has also been established. We'll have a specific slide after this one to show you exactly who's coming, but again, the theme is better. Better is mentioned many, many times in the book of Hebrews, 13 plus, as I recall, and each study will be concerning the book of Hebrews, which will be an excellent study. Again, it's Wednesday nights beginning June the 2nd through August the 25th. Vacation Bible School, again, will be evening services. We'll do the balloon liftoff and ice cream supper the Sunday night that begins it, which will be July the 11th through the 16th. Mark your calendars now for our fall lectureship, which is a little bit later than it usually is. It's the second week of October, the 14th through the 17th, Thursday through Sunday, for the Earl Edwards will be the anchor of that lectureship. Concerning our summer series, we have several excellent speakers lined up again this year, as we always do. Brother Tommy Tidwell will speak uh, first on the overview of the book. Brother Gary McDade from GBN will speak uh, the second week. Brother Larry Acuff will also speak concerning better things. Adam Kozort, you may be thinking, who in the world is Adam Kozort? He's a young gospel preacher that preaches at Milledgeville, is that right? That's where Justin Reeves attends, and it's also someone that knows, um, one of Jimmy's sisters knows, and she's been after us for some time to get him up here, so we have, and we will, we're confident that he will not disappoint. Brother Adam Kozart will speak June 23rd concerning better hope. Brother Ed Lee uh, from Cedartown, well, the new preacher at Cedartown, will speak the, speak the next week. Chris Clevenger from uh, Ironathan will speak the next week. Brother Clevenger, incidentally, will host our gospel meeting or conduct our gospel meeting in 2011. So he's an excellent speaker, and we're looking forward to having him. BBS the next week, then Brother Ed White, Sidney's brother, will be here. And then Brooks Boyd, fine preacher from the Rome Congregation, Patrick Gray, Philip Satterfield, the preacher at Macklin Road, and our own John McDaniel will speak the next to last Wednesday night of the summer series, and then Craig Hallman from Rockmark will conclude our summer series. Concerning our budget, we did establish a weekly budget of $4,067. All through last week, our budget is $4,056, which is the average contribution. We're pretty much on track. That does include, however, one of the contribution goals that we asked you to contribute for, which was the Haitian relief, which turned into the Chilean relief. And most of probably 2,000 or so dollars we did forward down to Valdosta. But again, concerning our budget, we're right on track. We would ask you to continue to help us in that effort. 
very pleased to report. Our attendance, we had 178 people here this morning. That's good. That's really good. And we're hopeful that that will continue to climb. Our average attendance of late has been about 156, 157, but we're hopeful that will continue on a positive track. How are we doing on our goals? You remember, Brother Jimmy did a fine job at the first of the year presenting our goals and our objectives for this year in each area of evangelism, edification, and operations. The first subset of our goal of evangelism was to continue to preach and teach. We've met that goal, and we want to continue to meet that goal, and Lord willing, every Sunday and Wednesday night, we will meet that goal. We also established a specific number of baptisms that we wish to try to accomplish this year. We're not on track concerning that. We've done one, to my knowledge, this year. We would encourage you. There are many, many wealths of resource that are very knowledgeable scripturally that can help in personal Bible studies. If you have family members, if you have neighbors, if you have workmates, whatever, that has an interest in the church that you think would be likely to have a Bible study, let us know. That's our job, and that's what this is all about. We can help in that effort. We would encourage you to do so. We've had several that have been visiting with us that have been absorbing a lot of this material that's been put forth. We're hopeful that some of it's fallen on good and honest hearts. It is our objective to continue to try to help the church grow spirit but also a number attendance goals we haven't really established a specific goal for our homecoming but if you look at how many we had here this morning we have 65 70 some odd family units that attend here with us at Bremen each one of them invites one or two we can easily have 275 so let's see if we can obtain a goal attendance of 275 people if we have 250 of them to come back here and eat with us, you can see why we need plenty of food. Concerning edification, our goal was to participate in Brothers Keepers programs. We do have good participation in our Brothers Keepers programs. It is an excellent resource. It is a tool. And if you're not participating in it as much as you think you should, we would encourage you to do so because you invest in it, you get dividends. There's no question about it. And for those who are helping lead that, and for those who have even thought about, well, maybe I might want to lead a Brothers Keepers team one day. It's not that hard. It's not easy. You got to put a little effort into it, but it is an excellent training tool. It's an excellent resource. And for those who might have thought, perhaps I might be a good leader, We'll put you to work, no question about it. We'll reorganize in the next four months or so. We also wish to participate in area events. The church here does an excellent job at that. Many times we go to gospel, we go to gospel meetings, we go to area-wide singings. I kind of take a count Bremen heads. We've got a lot of folks there at every area event, and those brethren at those other congregations really appreciate that. We've had one men's meeting. We should have some others. We need to establish one. We don't have a specific date at this particular time. We've also asked for quarterly contribution goals. We did have one that you met, but not only met, but exceeded. But again, everything that we ask of this congregation, you've always been very cooperative, and we thank you so much. Concerning our operations, we're hopeful that we can effectively utilize all of our resources. We have many, many resources at our disposal. We have our radio program that we've mentioned. We have our website that we've mentioned. We have an excellent resource that we're certainly thankful to Sister Tomlin that oversees and, uh, and looks after that particular section of our resource. We have an excellent library. There's books in there that would cover any kind of a topic that you may have any inclination about whatsoever. There's tracks in there if you have a specific need for tracks. There's tons of tracks in there. We also have a teacher resource room, any of our Bible school teachers that have a Wednesday night class. You need some resources for that. It's chock full of stuff. For VBS, it's chock full of stuff. That's an excellent tool for us. Our TV programs that we mentioned, the phone tree, 
as you may have noticed, we've tried to utilize our phone tree a little bit more to remind those men who have assignments to help Ricky as much as we possibly can. We also use that for notifications of bereavement, notifications of important upcoming events, and so forth. And we also, many of us, have at least one email account. Many of us have more than that. But we can utilize email as an effective evangelistic tool as well, to remind folks of what's coming up, to encourage them to participate in certain events, and so forth. Now to move into the second phase of our service tonight, each elder will have a specific prayer list that we'll mention this evening. We divided this up, and again, we're hopeful that uh, this will be an effective process for us this evening. We'll ask Brother Ray if he would to come up first and begin. have several who are sick and suffering in our congregation. We would like to remember them and hope that they will soon be well. Our Father in heaven, we ask your blessings upon Sister Louise Smith. Pray that she'll continue to do well. We ask your blessings upon Jane Spake, that she will do well and Ask your blessings upon Bobby Brannan and uh, pray that he'll continue to do well. We ask that blessings upon the butlers that they will uh, soon be able to come to church and be with us. We ask your blessings upon Brother Richard Wheeler. Pray the dear father that he, his health will be, become better. We ask your blessings upon Justin Wilson and I ask your blessings upon Brad Willis, uh, the grandson-in-law of, of the, the Richard and Shirley Smallwood. We ask your blessings upon Ray Worley while he's uh, serving his country. We ask your blessings upon David Higley, which is Brother Martin Higley, that father, and pray the dear father that he will soon be well again. We ask your blessings upon Pam Wright, friend of Mary Flanagan and Elise Tomlin. We ask your blessings upon Jeanette Kimball. Ask your blessings upon Erling Wright. We ask your blessings upon Ruby and Sexton, the sister of Doris Hutchison. We ask your blessings upon the Scott Williams family. We ask your blessings upon on uh, the Zachary King, who is the grandson of Sue Roberts. Pray that he will soon be well. We ask your blessings upon all others who are sick and suffering. And I ask your blessings to always be upon us and help us to do what we can to help them. Is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray again? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this opportunity we have this evening to come before thee in prayer. We ask a prayer for the Karen Bearden, Sue and Eloise's niece, as she's doing better out of her recent eye surgery that continue to make progress and be well once again. We ask a prayer with Meredith Head, Frank and Lola Head's great, great niece, as she's been diagnosed with leukemia and the treatments that she's and go through that uh, would help her and comfort her. We ask a prayer for the Chris Head, Frank and Lola's nephew, as he's recovering from heart surgery, that he will continue to make progress and, and be well. 
We also pray for Hope Hickman, the friend of Jake Reeves. We also continue to pray for Shirley Smallwood as she's going through these trials and of sickness and, and her health at the medicine that she's taking and the, the treatment she's going through will help her get better. We also pray for Mandy Reeves as she's fixing to go under cancer treatment. This is Stephen Reed's cousin that uh, the treatment will be successful and then she will be well. We also pray for Ellis and Barbara Meek, which is Elizabeth Reed's stepfather and mother. We also pray for Joan Thurman as the, the things, the trials that she's going through, the, the depression that she's under, the stress that she's under, the continued, that we would be an encouragement for her and, and comfort for her as she's going through these trials. We also pray for Massey, Mason Olivo's, Olivo, Sydney and Ann's grandson as he's coping with his illness, that the things that's being done to help him will comfort and care for him. We'll also pray for the newest addition to Sydney and Ann's family, the great newest grand grandson, Zachary, and thankful for his successful birth at the, as he's grown and that he could continue to be healthy and, and grow up to be a fine young person. We also pray would be with uh, Frida Gray as she's going through her trials and her health, comfort and care for her. Also pray for Sue Roberts as she's about to go forward through some additional surgery that uh, the surgeon will help her and help her get better and she'll be able to move better around here and at her home. We we'll also pray for Gail Woody and the, re the recent surgery that she's gone through her in her shoulder that comfort and care for her and pray that we also will be an encouragement for her. We also pray for Jimmy Nolan at the recent surgery he's gone through in his knee that uh, the therapy he's gone through that will help, help him get better. We also pray for Sonny Souther, Sharon Duffy's brother. We also pray for Bert Glovers, which is Ken's sister-in-law as she's uh, experiencing health difficulties. We continue to pray with these people that we have prayed for this evening and comfort and care for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bow. For Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you have given us. We're thankful for the opportunity we have at this time to approach thy throne with our petitions. Father, we're thankful for the opportunities that come our way each and every day. Father, at this time, we pray a special blessing on the bereaved of this church family. We pray for the Walls family and the passing of Matt. We pray for the John Vines family and the passing of his daughter, Beverly. For the Buford Spake family, for the Ray Tuggle family, for the Virginia Wheeler family, and be with Frank, for the Ed Bonner family, and the Woodson Bagby family the brother of Francis Westbrook. We pray that you'd be with all these, and Father, as thy servants and as thy children, may we see these as opportunities to be a blessing unto each one of these with kind words and kind deeds that we may help them through these times. Father, at this time, we also pray for our shut-ins. We pray for my mother that you'd continue to be with her and be with us as her family, that we would watch after her and tend to her needs. We pray for Mary Blank's family. For the Maybell Cash family, Father, that you'd be with Maybell. She is such a great encouragement to each time that we see her, and we're so thankful for her, and may we also be a blessing unto her. We pray for Lila Waddell, and that you would be with her, and that we also may continue to visit with her and do, meet her needs as they arise. Father, for the upcoming events that will come to this congregation, we're so thankful for. We're thankful for the homecoming and gospel meeting that will be here in a couple of weeks. We pray that you'd be with Cliff and his family as he prepares the lessons that he will give us while he's here. We pray, Father, we'll prepare ourselves for, these, for this week of gospel meeting, that we'll prepare ourselves, that we may have open minds and receptive hearts. We will take every avenue to invite our friends and our neighbors, the lost of this community, to be at this place at that time. Father, we're so thankful for the summer series that has been planned, Vacation Bible School and the Lectureship. Father, if you give us this time on this earth, we pray that you would be with us in all these events, that they may do much good. Father, we're mindful of the Haiti and the Chile relief efforts that we have been a part of. We pray that each thing that has been given will be used with wisdom, that the things that will bring comfort and help to these communities 
in these countries. And also, Father, we pray that the word will be spread in these places and others may be, come to know thy son. Father, we pray that you continue with this congregation of thy people that meet at this place. Help us in all that we do, and may we use thy word as our guide each every step of the way. For this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. When we have a presentation like we've had tonight, it's somewhat overwhelming to think of all of the things in which we are involved as a congregation of people and our elders are seeing to the funds that are distributed to these various works and to know of the outreach capabilities of, of many of these works. Uh, it's just, just unbelievable and I'm grateful that we can be a part of all of that. And then to hear all of the names mentioned of those who are hurting in some way physically, it just reminds us that we have unbelievable opportunity to do good, to help, to see the needs of along the way. And I know that we often have these names rolling on the, the screen when you come in, of people on the sick list, but but when we take the time to mention them by name and ask God's blessing to be with them and, and whatever their specific need is, it just reminds us, yes, we can go to God in prayer, we can ask his help, but what can we do to help these people? And it just says to us, we have got a lot of opportunity to do a lot of good, both physically and spiritually. And uh, while this has been, I suppose, a, a presentation to to update us, and that's the way it was presented to us. Yet to me, it is somewhat of a challenge that has been placed before us to keep up on the good that we're doing, making sure that we don't allow um, you know, any of this effort to fall through the cracks. That each of us, with every ounce of energy we have, to do what we can do in any of these given areas. Uh, just to see that the Lord's work continues to grow and prosper and as much good as possible be done by this congregation of people. It's, it's a joy when you see all that's being done to be a part of a congregation like this. And I hope you feel that way and if, if you know, I hope that you will look for opportunities where you can do more to be involved. You know, Paul said, to the brethren in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we have, have a lot of opportunities to do that, don't we? So let's do our best to be involved. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, then that ought to be of prime concern to you tonight. Yes, this congregation is doing a lot of work, a lot of good around the world. But if you're not a child of God, then how much effort are you putting forth to spread the kingdom? None. You're actually serving as a hindrance to the work of the Lord if you're not on his side. Because Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. It's not a matter of just floating along. It's not a matter of whether or not you're opposed. Jesus said you are. If you're not with him, you're opposed to the good that he's doing. And expects us to do. What a golden opportunity we have tonight for you to obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be buried with your Lord in baptism, to become a child of God, to begin to be active involved in all of these different things that have been discussed here this evening. Or as one who is a member of this congregation, but maybe you haven't been as involved as you need to be. Doesn't mean that you need to respond in a public way tonight. If you do, that's, that's something you need to take care of. But I suppose all of us to some degree could say, I've let opportunities slip. I've let opportunities pass. I've had good intentions, but I haven't cared through on some of them. What a night it would be for us to renew our dedication, do what we can do as members of this congregation, to support the elders and the work that they've laid before us, See to the needs of those who are hurting, 
whatever we can do to be a part of the service of the Lord in this area. But tonight, if you need to respond in a public way to the Lord's invitation, you have that opportunity as we stand together, sing this song. Again, for those that are visiting with us or we're not here this morning, please take a moment, fill out an attendance card, leave that on the table in the foyer so that we may have a record of your visit here with us today. Again, I'll remind you of those that we announced this morning on our prayer list. You're asked to continue to remember Ruby Sexton. Again, this is Doris Hutchison's sister. She did have more surgery of recent. Doris told me this morning that she is doing better, so we're thankful for that. You're also asked to continue to remember Joan Thurman, who needs as much encouragement as we can provide for. Frank Head has tests uh, in the morning here at Higgins, so we need to remember Brother Frank. The church has also received a thank you card from the Matt Walls family that will be posted on the bulletin board. Again, uh, work day is next Saturday, April the 17th, beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning. We want to try to spruce up the grounds and the building, make sure it's in the best possible condition it can be for our homecoming which will be the following, uh, well, the, the Sunday, the 25th of April. Again, that work day next Saturday, 9 o'clock, beginning here at the building. There's also a wedding shower. I think I may have said Saturday uh, this morning for a uh, Ashley Bishop, but it's actually Sunday afternoon, which is next Sunday, April the 18th. She's registered at Bed Bath Beyond Macy's, and Home Depot gift cards are welcome. Brothers Keepers Groups 3 and 4 responsible for the event. And for those ladies, you're asked to meet after the Wednesday evening service to make further plans for that event. Again, wedding shower for Ashley Bishop next Sunday afternoon. Brothers Keepers Group 2 will meet Saturday, April the 24th at the home of Sean and Mickey. More detail coming up shortly. Brothers Keepers Group 4 will meet at the home of Roger and Shirley Lane next Saturday, April the 17th. 
There's a sign-up list in the foyer. If you're in Brothers Keepers Group 4, please sign up on that list to know what to bring. Brothers Keepers Group 1 is meeting tonight in the Fellowship Hall. They'll conduct their business after we have the last of Leaders Appreciation Dinner, which is again immediately after the evening service, and all are invited to attend. There's a gospel meeting that began today at the Villa Rica congregation, Brother Leroy Dedman conducting that meeting goes through Wednesday evening. Lord's Supper is kept in the library for those that have yet to observe it. Once we stand and sing, go through this door, second door on the left, there will be someone there waiting to serve you. Again, our next service Wednesday at 7. Surely we've mentioned everything, but in case we haven't, is there anything else that we need to say? Yes, sir. Okay. We go All right. There's going to be a continuous loop of last the leader's pictures basically in a slideshow. And uh, we'll show that after the closing prayer. And uh, then we'll eat. Okay. Final song. Number six. Number six is our final song. If you'll stand, we'll sing and be dismissed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day you blessed us with. Thank you so much for this church that meets here at Bremen, all the members that make it up. Pray that you'll be with our leaders. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for the many blessings you bestow upon us daily. God, please be with all the ones that we mentioned in prayers tonight. God, thank you so much for sending your son to die on the cross for us. It's in his holy name we pray. Amen.